And Douglas said something true and beautiful. He said that this is not a collaboration, it's a collision. And um, what I find extraordinary is that you know, his vision lends me wings, and I hope that um, it's vice versa. Um, and it's something which, it's a, it's a wonderful journey. I think that it has the potential to take the emotion to the next level, hopefully for all of us. Always hard to say something like this because it creates expectations, so it's dangerous. But, um, but it can do that. It's not something which is etched in stone. It's not something there is a recipe for. You can't replicate it. Um, all you can do is, um, is be open to what the moment has to offer. But the moment is um, magnified in an indescribable way through what Douglas has created. The idea that tears become streams become, you know, how many times have you, how many times have you cried in your life? How much liquid have you given to the world? Probably a field of water, something like that. And I think that that's, uh, I don't think that that's tragic. I think it's really celebratory, actually. So I wanted to, you know, if I'd had about 50 years to work on this piece, I would only just have cried a lot rather than use other water. But, you know, so th this for me represents uh, that stuff. Every time we work with artists, they come up with things that are sometimes feel a little bit daunting, but that's about what we do. I mean, really the work we do here is very unusual and rather unconventional, and it tends to press the boundaries of even technology, if you don't mind me saying so. Um, so in, in this particular case, the idea of uh, flooding the drill hall was huge because it's a really big space. Um, so we hired an engineering firm, Arup Engineering, who are one of the largest engineering firms that world, um, and also known for working with artists. They'd worked with Anish Kapoor, they'd worked with Oliver Eliasson, um, and many other artists. Anyway, so they came in and they took on this problem. The technical challenges are not ones that you face in your uh, typical building. So, in fact, we had to invent a lot of uh, new methodologies, if you like, to uh, figure out how to create the lake how to put the water in and uh, take it out within the time frames that the, the artist uh, was interested in. And uh, some uh, interesting sidebars as well. Uh, Steinway were very concerned about the humidity uh, caused by the lake and what sort of impact that might have on uh, the piano. So a little bit of study uh, showed us that the best way to control the humidity w would be to actually chill the, the water in the lake to between 50 and 55 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And so figuring out how to do all of that uh, while at the same time moving the water between the temporary tanks that are uh, in the ante room uh, to and from the lake, uh, all of that was quite challenging and uh, quite exciting, really. We start off with a layer of plastic right near the, uh, the floor. On top of that, there's a layer of uh, uh, compressed board that has two purposes. Firstly, it will even out any uh, uh, anomalies in the floor surface, but it will also have a certain amount of absorption should there be any leaks. Then on top of that, there's a continuous layer of pond liner, which actually forms the bottom surface uh, of the lake. Now, on top of the pond liner, we have an uh, array of CMU blocks that then act as the support system for the uh, floor above. And the material of the floor that you actually see is something called uh, Viroc, which is a cementitious board. And uh, the reason for that void that's formed by the CMU blocks is that we have a network of pipes that have to run down there as well to supply the water and take the water out. Well, I think, I think this is a great example of the kind of work, it's a very good example of the kind of work that we do here that you know, we ask artists to come in and just imagine things and, you know, in a more formal setting, it's hard to kind of blow your brains out this far. Um, and it is an interesting 
situation that we have here that artists just keep pushing out those boundaries and keep thinking up new ways to look at that room. And you know, we've never set it up the same. We've done 34 productions now. It's never been set up the same. So it's always, it's, it's really adventurous. Although I would say 122,000 gallons of water in the drill hall was maybe one of the most adventurous we've ever done. So <laughs> I look forward to the future. Let's see, let's see what the future brings. You know, when I was trying to describe this kind of, uh, this work to people before, Someone said, you know, it's, it's a lake. And I said, oh, it's a loch, because I'm Scottish. So it's a loch, and a loch in Scotland is a big field of water. And a loch in German is a hole. And the hole is endless. As water starts to inundate this space, it will never be the same again. And as Hélène is playing, it will never be the same again. And I think this um, trying to encourage people to realise that what they have right in front of their eyes or right in their ears will never ever happen again. That's quite beautiful, I think.